It's 2018, and to this day, one of the most beloved WWE games is a game that was released at the tail end of the Nintendo 64's lifespan in the year 2000. Yes, 18 years ago. The game has become one of the most beloved games of a generation. Every year a new WWE game comes out, and since 2K15 they've been released on the PS4 and Xbox One, with bigger budgets, better rosters, better graphics, and more features than ever. However, none of them have been able to capture the pure joy and excitement that No Mercy brought a generation. A game that didn't have the best graphics at the time. A game that was released on a dying console. A game that was very similar gameplay wise to WrestleMania 2000. But still, very few games since No Mercy, other than a select few such as Shut Your Mouth, Here Comes the Pain, SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, and for some, WWE 2K14, have brought excitement to fans. Which we can talk about in another video. But what made No Mercy so legendary? It didn't have online multiplayer, it didn't have the graphics that we see these days, it didn't have a creation suite as an in depth as 2K18, but still every time you look on a list for the best wrestling games you will see No Mercy in the top 3 positions every time. Is it just nostalgia? Is it just because the game came out during the peak of the WWF, during the Attitude Era, when everybody and their mom watched the product? Or is No Mercy actually one of the greatest wrestling games of all time? The year is 2000 and the WWF is at its absolute peak. Ratings are higher than ever, buy rates are higher than ever, merch is selling at an all time rate, The Rock is red hot, Austin even though he's injured is still one of the biggest wrestlers in the company's history, Triple H has become the biggest heel in the company, and Kurt Hangle is just hilarious. The WWF is at its peak, wrestling once again has become a part of pop culture. We are about 3 years into the Attitude Era and it's 2000 and it was still going strong. Wrestlers in commercials, wrestlers on magazine covers and shows, wrestling was at its best and it was the most popular thing on television. Television. It was truly an amazing time to be a wrestling fan. During this time, wrestling games were great in the years past. In 1998, WCW Revenge was released for the N64. Developed by Aki and published by THQ, the game was a huge success. The gameplay, the presentation, everything about it was perfect. Minus the weirdest intro I had that had nothing to do with wrestling. But regardless, it was an amazing game. Much better than the WWF counterparts that were coming out in the same year. It wasn't even close, the gameplay was just so good for WCW Revenge, and then you had WWF Warzone on the other side, it wasn't even a competition. See Revenge took the gameplay from WCW and NW World Tour which was based off the Japanese game Virtual Pro Wrestling, and it made it even better. On the other hand, WWF had Warzone, the first WWF game in 2 years that was released in 1998 in June. It was okay, but WCW Revenge just blew out the water. Even 1999's sequel to Warzone, WWF Attitude couldn't hold a candle to Revenge. WWE fans were getting decent games but nothing as special as WCW Revenge, until THQ signed a deal and we got WrestleMania 2000, an amazing game. WWF fans finally got their WCW Revenge. See now WrestleMania 2000 was published by THQ and was developed by Aki, the same people who made WCW Revenge, and this game was amazing. And then in 2000, the PS1 started getting some great wrestling games. See, SmackDown 1 and 2 were great games for the PlayStation, they were huge improvements over older PS1 wrestling games, they had great new features, they had story modes, but nothing could compare it to what was going to be released in November of 2000. The N64 came out in 1996, and by 2000 it had lived a great life. However, technology was just advancing, the PS2 had come out in 2000, the Dreamcast although a flop also came out a year prior and it was a powerful console. The N64 by 2000 was just outdated, and by 2000 it was slowly dying, however it went out with a bang. What many consider the greatest wrestling game of all time, WWF No Mercy was released for the N64 in November of 2000. So let's take a look at the circumstances. It's WWF No Mercy, the follow up to WrestleMania 2000, a beloved wrestling game for the N64, coming out in the year 2000, the hottest year in wrestling history on the N64, a dying console. This was it, this was the last hurrah for N64 wrestling games. Somehow this game came out and not only lived up to the expectations but exceeded all of them. As soon as you start WWF No Mercy you are greeted with a beautiful intro showcasing the gameplay and you just know you're in for a treat. All you really have to do is start a quick match and you can tell right away that this game is something special. The entrances are great, the arenas and stages look great, they are updated to the time period, the music is playing, the lights are on and for an N64 game it looks great. Then the match starts and this is where No Mercy is considered one of the best wrestling games of all time. For the gameplay, this is what makes No Mercy what it is. The gameplay is just amazing. The gameplay is very easy to pick up but it's hard to master. The pace is somewhat slower to the SD games but the way that the game is created, it fits perfectly. The grappling system is perfect, you do quick tap for quick grapples and long hold for strong grapples. Each wrestler has 5 quick moves and 5 strong moves from the front and the back. They're done with a simple direction press and button combination. 
The reversal system is also awesome. There's no bullshit from the recent games where you just press R2 for every single reversal, whether it's a strike, whether it's a punch. No, for this, you actually have to know if it's going to be a strike, if it's going to be a punch, and you have to do it accordingly. Moves look like they had actual impact. Moves from simple drops to high flying moves to finishers. Everything was actually impactful and it looks so satisfying to land. Like when you did the rock bottom, the ring shook and it was like, holy shit, I just did the rock bottom and it felt like a finisher. The game was simple, but it was so satisfying to play and it was just so smooth. Sure, the graphics were not the best, but the gameplay was just so fun and it wasn't some bug infested, overly complicated games like the ones from today. Cough, cough, 2K18. You can easily pick up the controller and just play. Compare that to older WWF games like Warzone and Attitude, they required strict memorization where you legit had to do Street Fighter type combinations to do simple moves. I remember being a kid and playing those games and every like 2 minutes I had to press start, go to move list and figure out how the hell to do a simple DDT. The gameplay was just perfect for No Mercy, but there was so much more. You had the first ladder match and it wasn't just some half assed ladder match, you could actually go on top of the ladder, do moonsaults, do all this type of crazy shit. It was fun, you had guest referee, you had the Royal Rumble, you had various stages from the Royal Rumble to Wrestlemania to the basic Raw and Smackdown. And what I love about this game though is even though it's not the best graphic wise, it still somehow represents the WWF in 2000 perfectly. The moves look realistic, the stages and the arenas look great, and even though the models aren't the best thing, they still represent the characters well. There is just something about this aesthetic that made this game just look so good and feel so good to play. And then you have the create mode. The creator wrestler mode at the time was one of the best ever seen in a wrestling game. You could create any wrestler you desired. It was a little things. You could even put your favorite superstar in all sorts of ridiculous outfits or even change random things like removing Kane's mask. Obviously as years went, other games got better and better suites for creation, but at the time this was amazing. But in my opinion, the best part of this whole game was a story mode. It was a path to championship and there were several different paths for each championship. But there were storylines, and the storyline progressed different based on the result in the matches. Not just wins and losses, but things like, did you make your opponent bleed? How long did it take for you to make them bleed? Did you put them through a table? Everything was tied together. It wasn't just some random whack every week you have a match and eventually you verse somebody for the title. No, there were actual storylines that branch out. That was the best part of the story mode is everything was tied together. The real highlight was how storyline affected the matches. So say I'm The Rock and I'm in a backstage segment and I get beat up by Triple H or something, right? And he just breaks my leg, he fucks me up. When I go into my match that week, I'm more likely to tap out from like a sharpshooter or a figure four or any leg submission because my leg is all fucked up. Now, these days you have the similar, but this happened in 2000 and the fact they were able to put this in a Nintendo 64 game, to me it always blew my mind. The story mode was just so in depth and for the time it's just perfect. And the best part was, it wasn't just one storyline, you could branch out. So for example, when you start the WWF title path, you get to participate in the Royal Rumble. If you win, they follow a similar story to the real life 2000 Royal Rumble, where a superstar argues that if that you were eliminated, and somehow the referee gave you the win, and that it was all this big screw job, and that the decision should be reversed. Basically what occurred in 2000 with the Big Show and The Rock. However, if you lose the Rumble, it goes into a totally different storyline, so you have to play the path to championship many times to see everything that happens. It was great, and like I said, this game came out in 2000 on the N64, and they made this elaborate story mode that even the PS1 games at the time couldn't do. Not even just PS1, even if you look at the first PS2 wrestling game which was Just Bring It, their story mode was nothing compared to No Mercy's. I just love the story mode. And then you have the other things, you have the Smackdown Mall where you could unlock countless items, shirts, pants, moves. They had crazy moves like jackknife power bombs, the poison mist, they had the Ric Flair flop. You can unlock wrestlers like HBK, Ken Shamrock, Cactus Jack, the Godfather's Ho, which was way too expensive for anybody to afford, but you could have crazy big weapons like a block of cheese. It was amazing. No Mercy was just a perfect game, the roster was huge, you had unlockables, hell you had Andre the Giant in the game, who gets a verse in story mode and when he shows up it's like the most shocking thing ever if you didn't know he was in the game. The game just had it all. It was the complete N64 Aki wrestling game, which took years of great games and capped it all off. It took what WCW World 2 started in 1996 and all the games in between and combined the best parts and added more features than ever and made the perfect game. Plus you throw in the time period that it came out in, the hottest period in wrestling, it was just great. I'm sure many of you guys have great memories of just sitting with their friends playing some couch co-op and just having a blast. This game deserves all the hype. 
to this day in 2018 people are still playing this game people are still modding it if you I wanted to right now I could play no mercy and have Nakamura in there have John Cena there are different mods for it, the ruthless aggression mod you have classic even before the game came out you have mods with Hulk Hogan in there and all these classic legends like Randy Savage I could play an NXT mod the community is still alive for this game that's how you know it's a good game when 18 years later people are still playing this and modding it and it's not like it's a PC game people are emulating it they're modding it they're doing all this crazy stuff just to play this game because people love it. This game deserves all the praise and the legendary status. It is more than just nostalgia. WWF No Mercy is truly one of the best wrestling games of all time and if somebody told me that in their opinion is number one, I would not disagree.